I think that the time, that time that you think that we think that we're saving now by running around can bite us in the butt. Absolutely. It's going to bite you in the butt probably because you're going to spend that time being sick. And, and, and if you're sick and you don't have your health and you're in the hospital, well, then what are you doing? Right. You're not being productive. You're not working. You're not you know, driving your kids around. You're not doing your work. You're, you're in the hospital because of all that speed that you thought was going to save you. Mm-hmm. Right? The, yeah, the pushing it away so you can keep up with your life. Yeah. It comes back. It's yeah. a perfect analogy of being full on Thanksgiving because it does come back and hits you in the face in a way and says, yeah. pay attention, this is happening. My name is John Levine and I'm a certified health coach determined to help people reclaim health and happiness. My approach to health is compassion and looking at the whole person and understanding each person's unique set of health issues. I can and will help you reverse the chronic health issues you're dealing with. I hope you enjoy my show, The Whole Truth Podcast. Thank you for the support, and God bless you, my friends. All right. Welcome, everyone, to The Whole Truth Podcast with John Levine, powered by Shackley, creating healthier lives, natural, safe, and 100% guaranteed, and by Dean's Natural Food Markets with five locations in Ocean, Shrewsbury, Basking Ridge, Chester, and Metuchen. Jeanette Seely is a yogini, a healer, and mom of four little gurus. Her mission is to help others heal and transform through the art of presence. She offers a blend of Eastern and Western modalities like yoga, Ayurveda, massage, energy work, and much, much more that we will hear about. She's in studio. She's, I could tell I like this, this lady already. She's got a sweet smile, good positive energy. What's going on, Jeanette? How are you? Hey, John. I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me. Of course. My <laughs> pleasure. Thanks for coming on. This is going to be an interesting one because we're going to talk about pelvic floor health. Then we're going to get into birth, rebirth, and death. But first, I'm going to get right into it. Pelvic floor health. So I have a friend, Dr. Angela, and we did a podcast and we were talking about I always get it right. You say Kegel, I say Kegel. Is it Kegel or Kegel? Kegel. Kegel, Kegel. I think. Potato, potato, (laughs) tomato, tomato, whatever, Kegel. Um, But these are different than Kegels? Yes. So you you have a form of pelvic floor health that is a better form than Kegels. Um, I, w- I don't know if I would say better because with the direct one-on-one instruction of a physiotherapist or a specialist, kegels have their place. But on your own, um, it's probably not the best thing that you can do if you have any pelvic floor conditions like urinary incontinence or pain. We may have to have a debate. We might have to get Dr. Angela in here and have a bait, debate kegels <laughs> versus uh, – so, so, so okay, so what, what do you do? Okay, so we'll get right to it. <laughs> um, are you, so, you're, are you, you're gonna tell me, not show me. Like, how do you do? Like, how do you do oh, it? Oh well, a lot of it, a lot of the work that you'll do. Should we explain the pelvic floor first? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the pelvic floor is um, a band of connective tissue, of fascia, that involves um, some of the bony prominences of the hips and the pelvic bowl, and a lot of muscle, and then. Um, also that fascia or connective tissue, which is like the almost like the white skin on an orange, and it holds everything together and it transmits information. And um, it's quite thick and it is shaped like a dome and it works in conjunction with the respiratory diaphragm. It's actually a diaphragm as well that is used to aid in breathing. So when we breathe in, the respiratory diaphragm and the pelvic diaphragm move down and relax. And as we breathe out, they move up and that's the the function of them as we breathe and I think a lot of people are we walk around with a lot of tension in the body and a lot of holding especially of the pelvic floor Um, if you're a woman who's had children maybe you're sort of over recruiting those muscles Uh, you can tell if someone has a tight jaw (laughs) they might have a tight pelvic floor oh really yeah um, they're connected so Ultimately, what we begin to do is learn how to breathe and how to relax because it's, it's a bio 
psychosocial condition um, if you have things happening with your pelvic floor. It's interesting how certain things are connected. Mm -hmm. Like certain cancers are like connected to like, you know, um, like anger, a ca cancer that's like um, is connected to, um, what am I trying to say here? Like if you, if you're an angry person, you can get cancer in certain ar areas. If you have, you know, like if you've been abused, mm -hmm. um, you can get um, cancer in, you know, reproductive areas. Yeah. Like that's a whole nother ball game. But right. it, 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 you, that brought me to how things are connected. Very Meaning connected. The, fa the facial muscles being, you know, having them stiff and tight is connected. So that's, that's crazy. It could be an indicator. Yes. It could be an indicator. Of over recruitment of the pelvic floor. And a lot of the, the work that I do in, as a yoga therapist is to come um, into harmony with this idea of relaxation and core strategy. So the first part of that is using the breath properly. And that's one of the key tools that I use for working with the pelvic floor. I, I learned this from Shelly Prosko, um, who's a physiotherapist and a yoga therapist, who's absolutely amazing. And a lot of the work that she does is like rib breathing. So if you place your hands on your ribs. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, I'm going to do it. Okay. Hands are on the ribs, yes. rib breathing. And then just take a deep breath in and feel your ribs expand naturally. And a deep breath out and feel them soften and contract and draw back together. Boy, they really do expand. Right? Wow, yes. I've never done that before, but they really expand. It's a lot. And when you bring awareness there, then you're, you're definitely activating the right muscle groups within the core, like the serratus anterior transverse abdominis, multifidus, and that is also connected with creating pelvic floor health. We really forget human beings in this crazy ass world that we live in, especially in the tri-state area, we forget to calm the freak down. We don't even breathe. Right. Uh, this is just a reminder <laughs> to, to the listeners, to people viewing right now, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It is really hard because it's a crazy lifestyle that we live. And it doesn't take much to just freaking breathe. And just, it, it takes what? Thir you can walk outside in nature. You walk out in your backyard or just find a spot of grass and just. Yes. And help your <laughs> pelvic floor health. I don't know if you're a man. I don't, you know, what to, I don't know if you're a man. I don't know what to tell you, but uh, that's a whole nother ball game. But for women, this is something you right. can do, right? But for men too. Men have conditions, um, though not as common, of course. But right. yes, absolutely. But the breathing. The breathing. And then taking that breath awareness and combining it with gentle movements, like, like cat and cow movements that most people are familiar with. Just spinal undulations. With are those yoga movements? They are. Um, but they're, they're also, it's just somatic um, warm-up movements of any kind and focusing on that full deep inhale and exhale while you're moving, while you're walking, while you're pausing throughout your day. And that actually is one of the most simple ways to begin to work with the pelvic floor. So that actually, so that's pretty amazing. So the cat, I know the cat. Yes. That's when you're on all fours and, the, and you kind of like lift up your back. How is that, but how is that exactly helping the pelvic floor? Well, you can do that seated also. You can do it seated, you can do it standing if you just bend over oh, a yeah, little bit. Oh yeah, I guess bit. you could, right? Right? So that's working the pelvic floor because you're inviting the breath. There's, the torso works as a vacuum between the two diaphragms. So there's, there's a, a, it's a pressure system. And when you add a little movement and breath intentionally, you really activate that pressure system and allow it to function optimally. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So if you think we walk around most of the time, like you said, not necessarily breathing properly, we breathe really shallow, like right up here into our upper lungs. But right. our lungs are the size of footballs. They extend from the top of our clavicles to the bottom of our rib cage. So they're huge. and. If we take the time to breathe as deeply as we can without creating strain or too much effort, then we're working all of the muscles of the core in the way that they're intended. That's cool. But let's also try, let's also explain, you know, so pelvic floor health, why is it important? So, so, so for those who don't understand 
you know, what's what's the important, like, why are we even doing this in the first place? Is it for, like, you know, mm -hmm. incontinence, like that, you know, urinary, you know, just strengthening that mm -hmm. area? Right. So well, le I think leakage, that type thing. Yes. Like uh, urinary incontinence or uh, like if you sneeze or cough and you have a little bit of a problem from that, that's not normal. And you definitely want to work with that to see a professional. Um, oh, you can. Oh, so so some ladies can sneeze and then have. Right. Have, have a little leakage. Have leakage. Yes. Like is, is, it your, is it urine? All jokes aside. It is. is it, yes. it's, it's urine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. And then that's where. You obviously want to strengthen the mm -hmm. area. Sometimes there's urgency issues. Yeah. So like not being able to hold on once you realize that you need to use the restroom. Um, that happens for men and women. Gotcha. The the leakage, the sometimes there's pelvic floor pain. So lots of conditions that arise, especially as people age and, you know, go through life. Yeah. So, so at your practice you teach you teach women. Do you teach men as well? I, I work with women's health. But, okay. Yeah, I do in larger settings sometimes work with men and if they happen to be in the class. <laughs> yeah, men, we have to get some love. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm one I'm on an island here, boy. Ooh. <laughs> women help women, but men it just gets like <laughs> Mary's place by the sea is a is an incredible place I visited yes. yesterday and and they do and they have cancer treatment. Right. All sorts of things, incredible things they do. Maria McKeon, Michelle Gannon, if you're listening, um, just God bless you. Great work. And it's like you. all women. Like I was sitting outside because I couldn't be <laughs> inside. Men, 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 come on, man. <laughs> men, like enough. Stop being so damn stubborn. Right. Women, I feel like I have more estrogen in my body at this point than I do testosterone apparently because I'm surrounded by women. <laughs> but what do I understand that other men don't understand? Like health is so important. Right. Breath work is so important. It's not a hokey. It's real. Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of your health, you're in trouble. Yes. So like... You know, like if you're a man and you're listening, like all jokes aside, because I, I joke around, but come on, man. It, it, come on, man. Seriously. It, this is your health. Stop, stop, being, stop being stubborn. Please go out there, get help. You know, this is part of the reason I'm doing this is to educate and inspire people to, you know, if you have some issues, get, get the help. It's okay. I mean, we all have issues. You know what I mean? So. I, I thought that you saw all females. I, I was pretty sure that that was the answer, but I didn't know. But I, mm -hmm. wanted, I wanted you to answer that so I can get into the helping men. Because men, men, you don't see it. They need it too. They do. Yeah, yeah they were human beings. I mean, yes. Of course. Um, so uh, anyway, you, you start, uh, quit distracting me. You're getting me off, the, off kilter here. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding with you. So uh, okay, so that's, that's the importance of pelvic floor health. So, all right. What are some other exercises so, so women can start to implement them? Can they can they do these at home once they learn and they listen from the show? They can do these at home. This is not like a, you know, I have to go somewhere, type thing. Absolutely. I mean, they can go to you for sure. Yes. And I, you know, I, I know you now, and you're doing great things. But if, if they're somewhere away from where your practice is, they can. Right. If they have any kind of. Um persistent condition that's causing them significant impact of their life, I see a specialist immediately. You know, see someone who works specifically with pelvic floors. Usually it's a right. physical therapist. Oftentimes there's internal work that is involved because that's the only way to really tell if you're even like over recruiting or under recruiting the muscles is to have internal work. I don't do that. But what I do is really about breath and about awareness and about that biopsychosocial component, which is... okay. Your, your whole being that we talked about before, your mental, physical, emotional. Are you under a lot of stress? How are you eating? This will all affect your pelvic floor health. Yeah, so let's get into that real quick and then we'll, we'll, we'll get to the birth, rebirth, and death. Okay, so we talked before we got on air about holistic and I think we're both holistic yes. people. Mm -hmm. um, and what you're doing and what I'm doing um, in my health coaching is Holistic's not unconventional. It's not Eastern. It's not alternative. And I know that it, the word gets very confusing to people. They're like, what do you mean holistic? Is that like some fancy hokey? No. Holistic is just looking at the whole person. There's exactly. nothing fancy about it. It's just, it's just a, a very logical way of looking at a person's health. 
So mind, body, and soul. Right. Right. That's what we're doing. Absolutely. You know, just because you may have eczema on your hand, it might not be about the eczema. It might be about something that's in your head mm -hmm. that's creating stress that's giving you eczema. Exactly. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But until I get to know the situation and the person, until I get to know Jeanette, then we won't really be able to unravel the root cause of the eczema. There is a reason, and I'm just using eczema as a reason. Maybe you're getting headaches, right? You've got to get to the point, why are you getting headaches? You don't just get headaches. You just don't get them. No. <laughs> you get them for a reason. Right. Now, if you don't know that reason and you want to pop pills, God bless you. I, I'm not telling people what to do. You can do that. But that's not, you're not getting to the root cause of the problem. You're not fixing anything. Right. You're putting a Band-Aid on it, but you're going to keep getting cut over and over and over again, if you know what I mean. Exactly. So just to clear, clear that up as far as what holistic is and how you approach it, it works. It does. Because you've got to do, you have to do some detective work. Even yeah. Hippocrates knew this way back when. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. Food is medicine. Let food by the, be thy medicine and, and medicine be thy food. Yes. And um, and yeah, yes, he did. We need to kind of, we, we lost him along the way, didn't we? <laughs> we lost him. Well, poor, there are some beautiful. Poor Hippocrates. <laughs> like like all the medical yes. establish, establishment, they look up to him and you have to make the Hippocratic Oath. Right. And they like threw him right under the bus. <laughs> like Hippocrates, eh, here's the oath. <laughs> okay, don't tell me, show me. Right. Follow. He's the guy who sets the tone. Yes. You know, if you have to make that oath, follow what what he said to do. There's no reason to make a Hippocratic oath if you're not going to follow that oath. Right. And in this day and age, no one follows that oath. Poor Hippocrates. Well, he's... <laughs> Buddy, wherever you are, it's okay. We're, we're bringing you back. <laughs> we got Jeanette Seely in here. She knows the deal. <laughs> right? So, all right. Um, you're goofing around again. Yes. You're getting me off here track. We go. You're, so. you're goofing around again. Um, birth. Birth, rebirth, and death. And I don't really understand a lot of this because, you know, we talked on the phone. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to let you go with the birth, rebirth, and death. To, right. What's the deal with all of that? Well, I think it's really just about the cycles of life. The idea that everything that is alive if you look at the seasons there's a process of dying there's a process of birthing and there's a process of renewal um, if we look at our own lives and and the things that we experience and go through everything has that flow or that that process and I feel like sometimes when those deaths are really challenging complicated traumatic even um, that's when practices like yoga can come in and truly support the individual to uh, to sort of align the body, mind, and spirit and to work with the emotions in a way that is non-judgmental and completely accepting, but also um, develops a great deal of self-inquiry and self-awareness. What is it about yoga that is allowing that to happen? I mean, there's different forms of exercise. Some people like to lift weights, some people like to run, some people like to row, some people like to swim, some people like yoga. Yes. Yoga, time and time and time again, seems to be, for a lot of people that I've met, the breath work, right? The breath work, the meditation um, seems to enhance the, uh, I don't know what I'm looking at, uh, enhance clarity. It seems to... I don't know. Bring everything calm the mind, um, but 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 specifically getting back to like like birth, like so like what it is what is it about yoga, like what is it about like what attracted you to yoga, like what is it that yoga does for you that that like do you do you do you lift weights do you do strength training I do other things I yeah you do okay. I do absolutely because um, yoga is really a whole health system yeah more than just a physical exercise. So, yeah, I do HIIT workouts, <laughs> and I love. <laughs> yeah, got gotcha. But yoga is my spiritual practice. Yoga is really a system for uniting the body and the mind and the spirit. Um, what, so kind of, what, kind of, what kind of yoga? The, there's basically four kinds of yoga. There's uh, karma yoga, which is the yoga of devotion, uh, the yoga of service. 
of selfless service. And then there's bhakti yoga, which is the yoga of devotion. And you may see like chanting or um, satsangs that are kind of very bhakti in nature. It's all about love. Oh, and so you're in a cult. Yeah, those people so you know, might you think that. So you don't do yoga, you're actually in a cult. <laughs> you're chanting in a teepee out in the middle of the desert or something like crazy like that? I No, not necessarily, but that is a really beautiful way to experience yoga, the bliss of union. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. Um, you yes, yeah, I went to Bhakti Fest Om. last year. So chanting Om is amazing for the pelvic floor. Um, <laughs> om, chanting Om. It, it is a relaxing. It's a relaxing sound. Yes, it's great to do, and, and like so om. for so many reasons. It, for if you understand polyvagal theory at all, um, how the vagus nerve affects our stress response in our body and what that does overall, Om is one of the ways to really tone the vagus nerve to enhance our ability to deal with stress. Do we know that that actually does that? Yes. I mean, is there is there yes. there's an actual there's actual proof that Om mm -hmm. can calm that the vagus nerve? Yes, any kind of singing, <laughs> um, because you're ex when you lengthen your exhale, you activate your parasympathetic nervous system or that rest and repair response of the body. So when you're singing, you're lengthening your exhale. So any kind of singing. Chanting Om is just my way because it's yoga, but and yeah. I'm not that good of a singer. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, but but so. there's actual there's actual studies that yes. actual there's show a lot that. of studies on the vagus nerve and ways to tone it, to enhance its ability to calm down after a stressful event, to activate the parasympathetic response. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, and, it's fascinating. Um, and put that on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Listening on iTunes and SoundCloud and all the different podcast stations, you can you know you can listen to this. If you watch it on YouTube, if you watch it on Facebook, I will put up those slides. That's interesting. Um, so let's get into that a little bit more. Right. So Om or singing, it doesn't have to be Om, but singing will let's get again specifically the vagus nerve. It's what is it doing to that? It's toning it. So the vagus nerve is a nerve plexus or bundle that is basically right behind the solar plexus okay. and it, but it runs all through the the body and it actually innervates the organs um it's connected to your adrenal glands it's connected to your brain it's connected to your heart and your lungs and it's responsible for the body's parasympathetic response activation so that rest and repair response of the body so when it has high tone the idea is that uh, you can calm down quickly after a stressful event that your body will normalize and find homeostasis really yeah by singing singing is one way singing is hugging one way. splashing water on your face i like to put water on my face yeah cold water yeah eating because well if you think of the sympathetic response the fight or flight or freeze response you want to do things that tells your body you're stuck in traffic you're not actually in danger so eating food tells your body it's safe. We're not actually in danger. So, so chewing gum. <laughs> distract distract yourself from what's going on. Right. It's more than distract. It's kind of like it's very chemical, the whole process that happens when we go through a stress response. But, yeah, yeah it's really beautiful that there are some really simple tools for calming down. And that goes into play with the whole idea of, like, when people experience trauma of any kind, right. that birth, death, and rebirth, that we learn, we learn these tools. We, we really, it's there's some kind of post-traumatic growth rather than post-traumatic stress. Yeah, how do you calm down that trauma? So like, like everyone has trauma to a certain extent in their life. Um, some more than others, some more extreme than others. Um, and I guess what you're saying with yoga and ohm and calming down the vagus nerve is a way of kind of releasing the trauma. I guess, I, you know, my opinion, the trauma is probably always there, um, I think. And this would be a, a way, though, to, to release it, right? To just, just to kind of get it out. It's a way of creating, I think, safety in the body. Yeah. Like letting the parasympathetic response take effect. Um, there are lots of uh, lots of tools to to deal with trauma. Yoga is is just one of many, but um, the other two kinds of yoga are Raja Yoga, which is uh, 
uh, classical yoga, the eight limbed, and then dhyana yoga, which is the yoga of knowledge. So when we take pieces of this ancient practice and these great wisdom tools that we can then direct to our own experience, I think we can find great healing in that whether it's the pelvic floor issue that we're dealing with or something else that's shown up as a physical manifestation of an emotional challenge. I am listening <laughs> to you. I'm just counting my biggest nerve. I love that. Yeah. You have to practice what you preach, you know. Mm-hmm. I am listening to you. Yeah, no, it's good to take a few breaths. But you know what? <laughs> I like to learn. Mm-hmm. I hardly know everything. Although sometimes I like to think I know a lot, but <laughs> I do know a lot, but I don't know everything. So the beauty of meeting people like you is you get to learn. And if it, if it works for you, you implement those things. And if it can benefit you, great. Mm -hmm. So now I know, thank you, Jeanette, that I'm going to do the, what kind of breath work is this with the rib cage? I, I do breathe, by the way. Yes. I do, I do like a, uh, it's like a seven, seven, seven. So I breathe in for seven seconds. Hold my breath for seven seconds, and then I blow it out for seven seconds, which is you know a different type of breath work. That that kind of works for me. Mm -hmm. I hold I hold it, and then I let it out, and then I, I do it like you know six or seven times. But this rib cage breath, I'm liking this. It's a good one. Yeah. Do you hold it and then let it out, or you just let it out? Breath retention are practices um, and in the bandhas which is a whole nother part of yoga which are the internal locks to activate that yeah. sort of energetic container for prana yeah so retention is is good for some people and it also can be contraindicated for others so check with your yoga teacher but for you I think it's good you're quite mm -hmm. healthy you're not currently pregnant you're <laughs> that would be a contraindication for breath retention yeah, it would be. Um, heart Sometimes condition if I, if I eat too much cookies at night you, you, know, you I, might notice breath retention doesn't feel so I, good then I, I might look a little pregnant too but it's, it's <laughs> sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do absolutely that's right well you might be my new yoga teacher so there you go um, so what are the positions that I have to so I um, I am a big fan of uh, beans Mm -hmm. and hummus I love hummus I love chickpeas love them but I can overdo it on the chickpeas so um, I have a tendency to go into a yoga class and um, fart my brains out yeah. <laughs> so what are the um, and I, now you gotta you gotta be honest with me so have you ever been in a situation where you just just dropped the bomb and you just right right in class and everyone heard you that's a good thing. That means you have... Because I know, ever, I know everyone's... Yes. You're relaxed. Oh, sure. You're extreme, relaxed. Extreme relaxed. That's a good sign. It is a yes. good sign. How many times does that, does that happen, though? I don't think it's that often. Um, it depends. I think a lot of people work on retaining it, and unfortunately... Holding it in. Yeah. Well, you don't want to hold it no, in. No, you don't. You really but don't. You want to release but it. But if I'm in class <laughs> next to you, I want you to hold it in. <laughs> I understand that it's healthy to let it out. Yes. I get that, but not next to me. Right. Maybe maybe step away be for a moment and come back. Be respectful, like right. not next to me, not the whole class. Yes. You know what I mean? No, oh, that can make a stinky class. Yes, it can make a very <laughs> stinky class. But does that, so when you're teaching a class, do you just hear like a lady just go like, Bruh. It happens. It happens. Yes. <laughs> Great. So you're doing your job. Yeah. So yes. that person, you have got, but seriously, in all seriousness, you have got that person in extreme relaxation. Right, and they're and they're using their pelvic floor properly. It when reminds I... me, you know, like when I was when I was like a kid, and even even to this day, sometimes I'll take a bath, I'll put some Epsom salt and lavender in there, I'll get so relaxed, and all of a sudden, just here come the bubbles. <laughs> it's like <laughs> just here they come, yeah. like twenty to twenty five bubbles. <laughs> I'm like, oh jeez. <laughs> I'm like you know what this is this is why I did the bath. It's being human. It's being human. Yeah, yeah. it's all good. Uh, Shelly Prosco actually in in the pelvic floor class that I took with her, she gave everyone who released um, like a free download to one of her meditations because she said it's so good to just allow it to release. She's for everyone who who passed wind. She gave a free download. She did. <laughs> did she really? <laughs> yes, she did. 
<laughs> that could be a dangerous situation though. Like, it's well, like, we then, were then, trying. Then, we were... So now you're trying to do it, but then you might shit your pants. That's the problem. Was... <laughs> then you might be like, if you it worked for... out all right. You don't want to force things. <laughs> no. You... No, well, seriously, you don't want to force things. Because if you force things, then you end up with, like, you know. Right. It's just. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's you're, that you're, surrender, uh, the surrender to prairie, allow you whatever prairie, is happening. Prairie dogging it. If you're a pra prairie, no, you no. Could, you could, it could end up being a prairie dog situation. Okay. A prairie dog is. You ever see a prairie dog? Yes. Come, sticks his head up and out of the hole. Okay. Oh, I got uh, it. Okay. <laughs> you don't want a prairie dog situation. But you do want a relaxed pelvic floor. Yes. So it's perfect to. Yeah. <laughs> Are there windows? Can you can you can you open windows? We were in an open air tent, but open yes, air tent it, when that class took because place. it also because you know some important. of those um, um, the hot yoga the Bikram yoga mm -hmm. like that's like you could you pass wind there yeah and, I'm sure and, and and it's like there's no there's no air in the room and then that comes at you and you know you're gonna be cockeyed for a week oh gosh right. <laughs> I have not been to a hot yoga class. So. Oh, so you don't do hot yoga? No, no, it's not for me. I like the hot yoga. Yes. I do like the hot yoga, mm -hmm. but there's no air in there, so a bomb is like, anyway. Right, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yes, so. Again, this is the third time you're distracting me from what But it is. To... No, this is not. This <laughs> it is all here. weaves together. Yeah, it actually, does. It does. It's I mean, funny. I'm, I'm joking, yeah. but. But, I, you, but seriously, uh, you know, I'm, I'm joking and I like to joke, but what, what are we talking about here? But surrender let's mm. let's put let's put it all together yes when you're passing wind in a yoga class it is it means your body is calming down mm -hmm. it really does i yes. mean all jokes aside it means right. your body is calming down mm -hmm. that's the purpose of it exactly you're you're trying to get healthy your body it's your body saying okay mm -hmm. Jokes aside. Yeah. So it's good. The parasympathetic response involves digestion. So yeah. that's when you're stressed out, your digestive system isn't functioning properly. So do you have like, you know, you could, there could be like a fart challenge with other yoga instructors where like whoever gets the most clients to fart um, wins because that means you're the better <laughs> yoga. So, it, so let's say you have 20, um, 20 people in your class. And then you have a friend, a couple different friends, and they they have twenty people in their class. And you say, you know what? Today I had fifteen out of twenty drop uh, drop the bomb. <laughs> and the other one's like, oh man, I've I never had, had that conversation. I only had thirteen. <laughs> and the other one's like, I got twelve, but I'm getting there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it could means be. You had, means you had it's, a successful class. It's a successful class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the death. So there's birth, rebirth, and then there's death. And I know you told me on the phone that you have people come to you when they're dying. Can you explain to me a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, well, I worked with hospice for close to 20 years. And I think I mentioned when we were off air that I took a break from that when my yeah. parents died. But then I stepped back in sort of just because it's part of my soul's purpose. People were seeking me out. And I, I do yoga, massage, Reiki, essential oil treatments, um, to really kind of, again, unite the body, mind, and spirit, which is what people are looking for end of life. There's sort of a, um, a, a looking back with a sense of integrity over their life and reflection, reflection and telling life stories and then finding a way to be at peace, whether they're in pain or whether their mind is worried or... Right. Whatever is happening, I think the tools that I offer are such that they bring people into a deep state of stillness and peace. And then they know that they can find that, again, on their own. And they can use it when they really need it. Gotcha. So they're towards the end of their life at some point. And then, they, but there's something, there's some sort of trauma, I guess we'll call it. Um, that they still need, they feel like they need to um, uh, deal with mm -hmm. before they pass away. So I, get, I guess, I mean, I'm 44, and I'll, hopefully I will get to a point where I'm very old right? and seeing someone like yourself. Um, but I guess, you, you know, at the very end of your life, you would like to settle those things 
so that when you're dying, it, you're dying in peace without having any unresolved um, issues. And right. that's and those are the those are the people that come to you. Yes. Yes. Like, like what types of what types of um, issues and how old are the people? Um, anywhere from their you know seventies to nineties, and oh, wow. sometimes it's working with people who are currently recollecting some kind of childhood abuse, or um, for the first time. Mm-hmm. So it so seventies, eighties, and nineties, and they're and they're recalling childhood abuse, and they're dealing with it for the first time. Yes, I think sometimes we can keep ourselves so busy that we don't oh, wow. think about these things, right? But then, oh, wow. when life slows down and we find that there's a lot of stillness and oh, wow. injury, illness, pain, whatever may give us the opportunity to resolve those things. So, so that can come up. Yes. Wow, that's powerful. Yes. That's powerful. Wow. And it's beautiful. I mean, one of my favorite books of all time is the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. Okay. And it really talks about how to live well so that we can die well. And I think in our culture, we've often, we push away death, whether it's discussion of it, it's morbid, we don't want to think yeah. about it, we don't want to talk about it. But in actuality, if we want to die well, we do need to talk about it. We do need to create a plan to envision what what it would be like to think about what we would want who we would want to be with us how we want to go do we want to be on medicine or not do we want to be in our home in our bed or do we yeah. want to be somewhere else like what what do you want it almost like creating a birth plan when you're having a baby yeah but on the other side of the coin planning is important because mm -hmm. um, it can help you know keep you on track um, for your goal Yes, and and it kind of keeps you on that road. Um, I agree with that for sure. Um, it's hard to think about it too much. I agree, but I think there is some peace to have um, a plan in place of who's uh, you know. Do you want to be cremated? Do you want to be buried? Do you want to be buried near uh, you know, God forbid, your mom or your dad or your grandparents? And um, yeah, like what do you, um, you know, what do you want unresolved? Yeah. You know, like so what like, do you want your last days and weeks to look like? Yeah. Do you want to be in nature? Do you want family around you? Do you want? Yeah. What kind of music do you want? What kind yeah. of lighting do you want? Oh, like, you're making me think all about that right of now. <laughs> yeah, you know, Jeanette, you bring up something that's kind of um, been on my mind for a long time. And I think, yeah. I'd like to inspire people to adapt, um, and it's it's fast. The word is fast. Yes. And I don't like fast. Mm -hmm. I used to love fast. Right. I did everything fast. Played sports fast. Faster the better. Stronger the better. Lifted weights fast. Mm -hmm. I did. I did triathlons. I yeah. Want to be fast. Um, the older I get, I realize. For me, at least, it's not fast. It's slow. Because I I don't want to be in a rat race until I'm 75 years old and then get to the point where all of a sudden I have time to think about some of the issues that I've had and I literally have not dealt with them for years. And now here I am, 75, and I'm with someone as, as beautiful as you like Jeanette and I'm now dealing with it now it's like preventing disease like why get to the point where you have cancer like let's try to get you to do the things to prevent you from getting sick yeah I'd like to prevent I, I personally would like to prevent myself from getting to that point where I finally say for the first time like that that man or that woman like I had child abuse um, that's just an that's eye opening. Yeah. But I yeah. but I think that goes back to again as hard as it may be to just slow down. Right. Be present. Chew your food. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You can sit down. Take a breath. <laughs> You're allowed to sit down yes. at a table right. and chew your food. Yes. You're allowed to do that. 
You should do that. You're supposed to do that. Let everything work. Your teeth are in your mouth for a reason. God made teeth to chew food. That's what. That's their only purpose. Right. The saliva's job is to break the food down. Let your body work. Let your brain take the time to realize what's going on. Like even with the food that we eat, we eat so fast by the time, you know, like it's like Thanksgiving, it's like, oh, I ate too much. <laughs> like, it, yes. but, but you realize you ate too much because you ate too fast. Right. And you ate too fast, so you, you're that signal, your brain could not signal to your body what was going on. And Correct. then it was a, uh-oh. Yep. So again, that's another one of those, I don't have time to eat. Well, then you end up, you know, eating too much, not feeling well, you know, sick. And I think that the time, that time that you think that we think that we're saving now by running around can bite us in the butt. Absolutely. It's going to bite you in the butt probably because you're going to spend that time being sick. And, and, and if you're sick and you don't have your health and you're in the hospital, well, then what are you doing? Right. You're not being productive, you're not working, you're not, you know, driving your kids around, you're not doing your work, you're you're in the hospital because of all that speed that you thought was going to save you. Mm-hmm. Right? The yeah, the pushing it away so you can keep up with your life. Yeah. It comes back. It's yeah. a perfect analogy of being full on Thanksgiving because it does come back and hits you in the face in a way and says, yeah. pay yeah. attention. This is happening. Yeah. You've been able to ignore it for so long, but yeah. there comes a point when we have to yeah. face it. Yeah, there's a great book called The Body Keeps Score as well. It um, talks a lot about that, how our biology is our biography. What is it, The Body Keeps Score? Yeah. I can't think of the author, but um, that's another really beautiful one that just illustrates yeah. what we were talking about of how it, it is a whole person approach and emotions are connected with your physical health that yeah 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 well listen you do great work um, tell me so um, where do you do um, where do you teach yoga um, uh, energy work um, Ayurveda all the great things that you're doing with birth rebirth death where, where, where do you do this so that people know where to find you Thank you. Um, I have an office in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, and I have an office in New York City in Manhattan. Okay, great. Yeah, and I do um, online programs, yoga teacher mentorships, and uh, workshops around the shore at different studios. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I have to come to the, uh, one of these workshops. And um, for everyone out there, Jeanette Seely is the real deal. I could tell because as soon as I walked into the studio, I saw the smile and I felt the energy. Energy is real. You may not be able to see it, but boy, you can feel it. And I feel it with this babe. You're oh, awesome. John, you are too. And, it's been uh, a pleasure. Yeah. So say hi to your uh, your husband and your four little gurus there and <laughs> show them pictures of uh, all the toys that we have in this <laughs> podcast studio. So um, with that, we had some um, pelvic floor health talk, birth, rebirth, death, Really got into it about yoga and some farts. What can I tell you? Um, So with that, I hope you enjoyed um, my fans. Um, And sincerely, I appreciate the support um, and all the love right back at you. Until next time, that's a wrap. Adios, amigos. Adios, amigas. See ya.